Hello, my name is Anuja and I am a part of CSS team. This video is about creating a local repository and sharing it with the offline systems. There are two methods of creating a local repository. First, creating a local repository on the offline system using DVD or ISO. Second, creating a local repository on registered system using reposync command. Let us start with the first method, creating a local repository on the offline system using DVD or ISO. This is the offline system and not registered with Red Hat. I already have downloaded the rel 7.4 ISO under slash. Now I will mount that on the existing slash mnt directory. I am verifying this with the mount command and we can see this as mounted. Now I will create a dot repo file under slash etc slash yum dot repos dot d which will point to the DVD ISO. Let me name this as local.repo. Here the base URL says file colon triple slash. That means we are referring to the locally mounted DVD or the ISO image. The repo file is ready now. Clean the yum cache. And here I am able to pull the repository. Also I am able to list down all the packages available for the installation. Simple isn't it? Now. Moving on to the second method, creating a local repository on registered system using reposync command. I have registered this system now. Let us call it as a repo server that will hold all the packages. We will create a repository on the repo server using a reposync command and share that with the offline client using Apache. So. I am creating a directory called as repo under slash var www.html to hold all the packages. Now I am executing yum repo list command so that I can copy the exact repo id and use it in the reposync command. This is the repo id. Reposync hyphen l to list hyphen r for repo id hyphen p for path to store all the packages and hyphen hyphen download comes hyphen hyphen download metadata these two parameters are for downloading the group information so that we can use group install on the offline client we can now see the packages being downloaded. Downloading packages may take time depending upon the internet speed. Now since all the packages are downloaded, I am executing the create repo command at the path where I have downloaded all the packages. Hyphen G is passed here to update the group information in the repo data using comps.xml file. We can see that the repo data is generated for all the packages. Now let us check how to share this repository with offline systems using Apache. For that, I will edit the httpd.conf file. So let us search for server name. This should be the IP address or the host name of the repo server. The server admin should be root at the rate IP address or host name of the repo server and the document root is by default slash 
var www.html. Let us check the syntax by httpd t and that looks correct. Restart and enable the httpd service. This is my client system. I am creating a repository file on the client system under slash etc slash yum dot repos dot d and it will point to the repo server. The square braces will reflect the repo ID. Name can be anything and the base URL is the path of repo data directory on the repo server. I have enabled this and have turned off the gpg check. Clearing the cache and we are able to list the repository contents on the client system. This is how we can share a local repo using Apache. There are many other methods for sharing the local repo with offline systems. Now, how to update only the security packages on the offline system? Update info.xml file holds the complete data about all the available security updates. If we check the system cache, this file is unavailable. The file is generated by yum list sec command. All the available security updates are listed here and now we can find the update info.xml file in the system cache. However, the file is unavailable under the repo data. Copy this file under the repo data directory so that the offline systems can refer to it and list and update all the security packages. Now, I am in repo data directory and can see this file. Let us decompress it and rename it as updateinfo.xml. The modify repo command will modify the repository metadata to include the contents of updateinfo.xml file. Now, if we check on the client, we are able to list all the available security updates. Please check the Master Knowledge Base article for more details on this topic. Goodbye.